the Immortal Art Podcast. I'm your host, Eldin. This is episode 27, Art Dialogues number 11, with Josefa Cordua. Please support this podcast on Patreon and Spotify. The links are below. Check them out. Subscribe and follow this podcast on your favorite podcast app. You can reach me at immortalartpodcast at gmail.com. If it's not a big of a hassle, I would ask you to rate this podcast as well. Thank you. I moved to another apartment and I didn't have time to record art history episode yet. The next episode will come next week and it's about sexuality and these small figurines called Venuses. I have found Josefa's Instagram on one of these recommendation algorithms. Her paintings intrigued me and I sent her a direct message. We start chatting about art and painting. I asked her to do this dialogue with me and she said yes. Her Instagram account is in the episode description. This is a dialogue with Josefa. Hola Josefa. Hola Eldin. You are now in Chile, right? Yes, I'm in Santiago de Chile. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, I'm Josefa Cordua. I'm a visual artist from Chile. I am a painter. I studied art in Catholic University here in Santiago. I graduated in 2014. I've been a full-time artist since then. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Do you make money out of it? Yes, but not all these 10 years. The first years were very difficult. It was my dream to live from this, so I'm very happy. Many artists who are listening or those who aspire to be an artist mm -hmm. will be jealous of you. Here in Chile, it's difficult to live from art. There is few people that understand art or that are really interested in art and not decorative side of it. I think it's the same all over the world. For example, in Sweden, art is seen as a hobby. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how it is in Chile. Can you tell us? Yes, well, the career exists, but yes, most of people don't see it as a real career. So it's difficult to find a way to something that's really authentic, original work, and to be valued by people that are in the art world. The galleries are very small and it's difficult to access. How about street art in Chile or Santiago? There are some street artists, but I think not as in Europe or United States. Everything in Chile is smaller. I don't know much about street art. A few that are very known here and some from neighbor countries as Peru, Mexican that sometimes come here and do some art. Can you tell us a little bit about your art? Okay, my art, I paint mostly landscapes where nature is the protagonist. I want my paintings to be a window to the natural world because we are very disconnected from nature right now and we need to look at it again. Nature always has been my inspiration not only for its beauty, but also for its rhythms and cycles. I think we need to slow down and go back to the simple and value things that now sound from another time. But I think it's very important to go back to those things that are handmade or the things that take time to do. For example, my paintings, they took me like two months to finish. And it's my full-time job, so I'm painting all day long and I need to develop my patience and with social media and technology and all this lot of information that we get all day long and all the time. So I try to be with one thing in my mind, connected with the present moment and with the things that I do. I try to don't be on my cell phone all the time. I think it's a relation between the theme of the painting, that's nature as a reference, and also the time that it takes and the process itself. Can you tell us a little bit about your process? Yes, I usually start from a photograph 
I like to use my own photographs as a reference most of the time. Sometimes I've used photographs of another people and I ask them if I can use them. But generally I like to use the photographs that I take in my walks and hikes with my family. And I'm always paying attention to landscapes or to natural elements. And I have like these folders with a lot of images I want to paint. Then I said, okay, I'm going to paint this image. And sometimes I mix it with another one and make a new landscape. For example, put a little house in another landscape. Sometimes I add more leaves or more things to one image because I think it lacks on composition. So when I like the image of the reference, I start painting. First, I draw a little sketch, general sketch on the canvas. And then I paint with a layer of very washed paint to eliminate the white of the canvas. It's like a base for everything else that comes later. And then I start painting always from dark to light. So I start with darker areas and I go adding more details every time and, and more light to the painting. I've noticed that you paint canvas on the wall first. Yes. And I wanted to ask you why? Why I paint on the wall? Because it's easier for me to have it in like vertical position and the easel it's not enough for the size of my canvases. So I put it against the wall. Sometimes I put it on the a nail. So I don't know, I think it's very common or not. I painted one painting three years. It's six meters by two meters. And uh, I stretched the canvas on, on the wooden frame and I yes. painted it. The painting itself was on the wall, but I didn't have a stretch canvas on the wall because I didn't have that big of an easel. You take it out of the frame? No, no, no. I paint it on the wooden frame because when I go to buy canvases, it's usually 50 by 90 centimeters or 100 by 20, uh, you know. Ah, uh, here in Chile, I make it. I, I tell the person who make them, I want a canvas with these measures and they mm -hmm. make it. <laughs> here as well but it's very expensive i think the first canvas that i bought two by two meters can we talk about dollars maybe you understand two hundred dollars oh, two yes, by two yes it's a lot of money and then i have to pay somebody for the material and the hands and the time that they will stretch that canvas i did it with the help of a friend first canvas was really good second was like uh not so good <laughs> the third was perfect but it took me three years to do it but, but those that the same person that make the frame and that stretch you the canvas here in Chile. Yeah, here as well, but it costs a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> it would cost me maybe $500 for everything. Oh, it's a lot. Yeah. But also in Sweden, art is, as I said, art is a hobby. And people who are making art don't make money. They usually make money from scholarships that mm -hmm. are really hard to get. And now with the political system in Europe and especially in Scandinavia, the less money goes to art. So everybody begs for little crumbs. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, exactly. What advice would you give artists that is just starting or maybe considering art academy? Um, I will tell them to be authentic. I think it's very difficult to find like your own path in art because there's so much. There are things that are more fashionable. I don't know, it's okay with that term. But when you do something authentic that um, appears in the painting or in the, in the artwork. So it's important to have like your own voice. And also I would tell them to be very methodic and that's difficult for artists in general, but I think it's important to have like an habit to create because inspiration doesn't arrive from nowhere. You have to be working to get inspired, I would say. <laughs> I never wait for inspiration. I always seek for inspiration. We artists are always like open to uh, see something interesting in ordinary life. So. That's the good part of being an artist, I think. We're more sensitive to those things. What inspired you to become a painter? Mm, in my family, there are a lot of painters. 
-hmm. not known painters, but my grandmother used to paint, my uncles, my father too, my mother afterwards. So I think it's in my family and there are a lot of artists or architects, designers. I always draw and do things with my hands. When I was little, all my presents were made by me. How would you define your artistic style? I define my style as a figurative style, but I think I'm tending more to realistic painting, but that was not my goal because I'm always trying to look at the image of reference with more detail. I've been translated that into my painting. I just want to paint. Do you have a favorite medium to work with? Yes. Lately, I've been working with acrylic painting. That started because I got pregnant and it was safer. I discovered a lot of benefits of it. It dries very quickly, so it allows me to do a lot of layers. Well, that's the, the main thing, because I think oils are very shiny. The finish look, it's better, I think. That's why I varnish my acrylic painting with a very glossy varnish because I like to shine a little bit. Mm -hmm. And well, oil allows you to mix on the canvas and that's very useful too. I am happy with acrylics now because of the speed of dry and also because it doesn't have a smell and all those things. It's easy to clean. I love oil. I don't like tempera. I don't like acrylic. I would prefer oil in like a ideal world, but since my pregnancy was very difficult, I felt sick all the time. Mm, and, I'm sorry. Oh, yes. So it's a very bad <laughs> time for me to continue painting. And this was the only way. And later I needed to bring my baby to my studio. So I needed to be clean and without smell. I have a daughter. She's now almost four years old. I opened the oil color and I told her, can you smell? And she smelled it. That was a few years ago, no, maybe a year ago or something. I asked my daughter, how does it smell? And she was like, do you like it, daddy? Yes, I like it. Then it smells really nice. <laughs> I'm like, okay. She's so but sweet. She paints all the time. I'm the same with my kids, even if they're not painters or artists when they grow up. Yes, they will know to appreciate art. They can develop their creativity. Creativity is always useful, I think. You know, what people don't know is so many football players who, in some point of time, studying dance, they were much better football players. It makes sense. For example, Winston Churchill, British Prime Minister, he was a painter. He appreciated art. There's a lot of poets who are painters. He liked culture. So culture is very important for humanity. Culture is very important, as you said, for creativity. Culture defines humanity. But what yeah. people don't realize that culture is shifting towards television. Yes. The masses that's, want that's, something else. That's like the message I want to give. We're addicted to social media and that makes us addicted to immediacy and speed. We're losing abilities that are important for us and we're not aware of enough. So I'm trying through my painting to give this message of going back to the simple and to try to value things that in other times were very valued and now are not because we are stuck in this way of thinking that values only speed and efficiency and results. All the things that are more subjective are left behind. Well, artificial intelligence is replacing us in a lot of things. And I think it's important to go back to the things that are made by humans. Some of the kids in the schools that are six and seven and eight year olds, they don't know how to draw because their parents just gave them iPads. So I'm avoiding to give my daughter tablets. Of course, she's a kid. She's going to always watch something. I cannot avoid that. But she has maybe one hour per day to watch her favorite TV show. But in the meantime, we play, we draw. All people are proud of their own kids. But I'm very proud of my daughter. She already knows how to write her own name, mom's name, few numbers, and she's almost four. And we encourage her creativity. I think it's to be aware of the danger it is, especially for kids. But it's impossible to not use it 
of course I use technology a lot. My Instagram is a very useful tool to show it to the world and it allows me to get to people that either ways I wouldn't get to. I had a lot of new opportunities thanks to Instagram and I know there are a lot of advantages. It's to be aware that we are stuck all the time with our cell phones and we're losing what's happening around us and we are losing to live the present moment, all of our attention on it, because now we are used to thinking more than one thing at a time and trying to have like the most efficient way of take advantage of every single moment. We're not really enjoying it. Can you share a moment, either challenging, or very happy or something that you remember it fondly while you were creating a particular piece of art? Well, lately I've been thinking a lot about all of this I'm telling you. I do these reels on Instagram with my voice speaking in Spanish. And I'm thinking about that technology is not healthy for us because we're losing all these things. I have a good story of a painting. I really loved one photograph I saw on Instagram from an Australian garden designer. And he put up a photograph. So I asked him if I could use that photograph as a reference for a painting. And he said, oh, great, okay. And he was happy with it. When I finished my painting, I posted my video, the video of the process. He put it on his Instagram and then got to the daughter of the person that owned that garden. She wanted to buy my painting. She bought it and gave it to her mother as a gift. How did your art evolve over time and what factors have contributed to that evolution? My paintings before were more abstract. I was trying to make like something new all the time or something more contemporary. That's what I said before that it's important to find yourself because I think none of those paintings were really my style. It took me a lot of years to realize that. Josefa, yes? I noticed that you paint always in green and yellow, sometimes blue. What role does color play in your paintings? Color is very important, but I don't know if I choose the color before I start painting because I choose an image. I don't know if if it's color, like the first thing that comes to my mind. It's more like a general composition thing, but I'm aware my last paintings are very green and that's because I want it to be like this window to nature. I don't know if I thought it very much. I think it's what got out from me, what I needed in that moment. But I wanted to paint a lot of layers of different kinds of plants and how it has a lot of detail in the first layer and then disappearing in the back and how to find itself by light, the role of light in leaves and yellow. I think it's because I use Chilean landscapes, landscapes of my own country and there are very dry landscapes and there are very green landscapes. I know that color is very important, but I don't know if I choose it like that. When I know that my painting has a lot of green, I add some red in it. For example, I put these red circles that all people ask me why I do this. This was my next question. Why red circle in the middle of landscape? Yes. I like to add some details that are not like figurative, that tells you uh, this is a painting to give like a personal touch to the painting also. But I always put those details on contrasting colors. The red is the opposite of green, complementary colors. So you see it more. I think it's something to like, why is this here? I I like that reaction. Like. I want to give a modern touch. What is the point of art? I think the point of art is to sensitize people and make them think about something that's not in their minds all the time, to connect people with more intangible things. If you could have a dinner, anybody in the world, either historical figure, character from a book or a film, who would it be? I think 
that's a good one because I, I would like to have dinner with a lot of people. <laughs> but um, it comes to my mind Tolkien. Tolkien. The, yes, The Lord of the Rings. Thank you. I love that book. So I would love to ask him some questions. Oh, well, great. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, see, you see the yeah. Yeah, That's Tolkien yeah. fan for you. Uh, it's a great. full name of my daughter. One to rule them all. Um, <laughs> oh. One ring to rule them all, and it's around my wrist. That's a very good tattoo. Thank you. Okay, who's your biggest inspiration? Well, nature. But a person? Mm, I think right now, my own kids. <laughs> but artistically? I admire a lot a Chilean painter. He's mm -hmm. called Guillermo Lorca. Is there a poet also from Chile called Lorca? Ah, it's Guillermo Garcia Lorca, and this one is Guillermo Lorca Garcia. Aha, uh -huh, okay. I also admire and love the paintings of William Turner. Do you have a web page? Yes, it's josefagordua.com. And your Instagram? My Instagram is josefa.cordua. It was lovely to speak with you, and thank you for this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. This is my first podcast. Thank you, Josefa. Gracias. Bye, Eldin. Ciao. This concludes this episode. We didn't know what else to say in this episode. I want to thank you for joining and listening. I hope we inspired you. I hope you learned something. The music is performed by my friend Sebastian. You can check his band Cadavra. The link is below. Enjoy the song. Until the next time, goodbye.